Welcome. In this video, uh, we will prove another theorem, famous theorem of circle geometry. But let's start with a review of what you have learned from the uh, video before. Namely, about the relationship between the central angle and the peripheral angle. So we learned that uh, an angle inscribed from the center onto the same arc so here we have a central angle central angle here it is inscribed on the same arc so okay so here's a central angle let's call it Well, first let's make a peripheral angle on inscribed on the same arc. So here is another angle, which is going to be opposite or inscribed onto the same arc. Okay, so my chopsticks, short and long chopsticks. Okay, the long chopsticks make an angle which is half the size as the angle made by the short chopsticks. So let's see here this angle. Okay, we have a special relationship between these two angles. And what is this relationship? Well, it is that if this angle is, let's say, of measure x, okay, then this angle here is of measure 2x. In other words, uh, inscribed angle on the same arc is half the size of the central angle inscribed on the same arc. And what I mean by the same arc is, okay, I can erase that, you know the relationship. Uh, where is this point? Oh, it's not even in the circle. That's no good. So we're going to have to delete this. This point, however, is on the circle. Okay, that's good. So we're going to create a point here on the circle and link it with the center. Okay, now it's good. And then link these two points to create the other long chopstick. Okay, so now we have the proper angles that we wanted. And what we're saying is that is that this angle here is twice as large as this angle here. So, for example, if you know the measure of this angle is, let's say, 60 degrees, then the measure of this angle here, the inscribed angle, is 30 degrees. Or if you know the measure of this angle, let's say it's 25 degrees, then the measure of the central angle is twice as large, so 50 degrees. And uh, what we mean by inscribed on the same arc, it means inscribed from this point, from this circle to this point, there exists an arc, and we're going to well, that's not good. I need the wrong arc. It has to go from this point on the circle to this point. We have an arc. Yes, that's the arc I wanted. So we are going to display this arc with some thicker line style. All right. So let's see. Let's uh, put some measures on these angles. Um, so you can actually see, oops, okay, I'm still learning these tools, so we want the pen to draw the angle, and we would like the measures of these angles, so let's first put some names of some points here, point A, B, C, so we have angle A, C, B, 
and we have angle, central angle ADB. And what we're saying is that the measure of ADB is twice as large as the measure of ACB. Or in other words, that the angle size ACB is half as large as the angle ADB. And so we would like to show some numbers for that. So we can actually select the angle A, B, B, and measure it. We measure this angle. Okay, here is the measure of this angle. And ADB is now 95.85 degrees, but we can certainly resize the angle and make it. Okay, here it's going to be, oops, 180 degrees almost. Okay, and so on. And we could uh, also measure the other angles. So angle A, C, B should be half that size. So we measure that angle, and it's half its size. Okay. So if we resize, okay, you see how they move simultaneously? All right, so this is what we will use to prove our theorem from today. Okay, so what we want to look at today is what relationship exists uh, between angles on a cyclic quadrilateral angles on a cyclic quadrilateral. So what we mean by cyclic quadrilateral is we have four points anywhere on the circle, four points. Oh, this one was not on the circle. So here we go. Four points joined together into a quadrilateral. Here we go. So we have a quadrilateral. Okay the rest. I would just to review. Okay, the main lesson we're starting right now. Oh, and we lost the point. Here it is. Okay. And we really don't have this point either. Nor do we have this arc. Okay. Again, we lost that point B. Here we go. So let's name these points. So we have a cyclic quadrilateral AECF. Cyclic just means that all the points of this quadrilateral rest on the circle. They rest on the circle. So, and they're fixed on the circle anywhere. And we would like to know what relationship exists between the angles on a cyclic quadrilateral. And now these are irrelevant, so we'll erase this. This angle measures have nothing to do with the cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, so here's the cyclic quadrilateral, and we would like to know what relationship exists between the angles of such a cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, so let's pick one angle, let's say angle A. Angle A, as you can see, is inscribed on this arc, ECF. So endpoints are EF. Uh, so let's construct this arc, arc on circle. Okay, so that is the arc of the angle at A. So inscribed angle at A is inscribed, meaning opposite from the arc ECF. Okay, uh, there is also a central angle that sits on this same arc. And the central angle, oh, I need one segment, okay. Central angle. Uh, inscribed on the same arc ECF. Okay, and we also have an angle, central angle ECF. There we go. And we know if we label, let's 
say we label this angle here x, we know that this angle here is oh sorry, it is 2x. So angle EAF has a measure x and angle EDF has a measure 2x. Okay, let's just change some things. Uh, that's not good, something flipped here. And we don't want this angle. Oops. Let's see. This angle we do not want. Okay, what we were talking about is this angle here. Okay, so angle EDF. It has to be, you see, it has to be inscribed on the same arc. So it has to be exactly opposite or subtending the same arc, like chopsticks, okay, subtending the same arc or chord, chord EF. You can imagine a chord there. So the short chopsticks, FD and DE, subtend this same arc or chord EF as the peripheral or inscribed angle with the vertex at A also subtends that same, this same arc ECF, okay? So uh, the measure of this angle is twice as big as the measure of this angle. Okay, let's move on. Uh, we also know you see there is another arc here, EAF, and that arc is subtended by which angle? By the angle at C, you see, by this angle. And that's now a different angle, but on the same arc here, EAF, we have uh, this central angle. So the central angle subtending arc EAF is also related in uh, um, is twice as big as the peripheral angle subtending this same arc EAF. And so we can put uh, the measures of these angles. Let's call this one here the peripheral angle Y. And the central angle is twice as large, it's 2y. Okay, we're almost there. You can see that the measures of 2x plus 2y, that's a full circle, so we have 2x plus 2y, that is equal to hmm, sorry, measure y is equal to full circle, so 360 degrees. Okay, we can factor out the 2. It's a common factor. So 2 times x plus y, that's supposed to be y, is 360 degrees. Okay, we divide both sides by 2, so we get that x plus y equals 180 degrees. And this is what we wanted to prove. What we have shown here is that the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add up to exactly a straight angle, 180 degrees. By the very same argument, we could also show that this angle plus this angle also add up to 180 degrees. So we have that angle measure of the angle CEA CEA plus the measure of angle opposite to it in the cyclic quadrilateral. So CFA CFA is also equal to 180 degrees. In other words, opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add to 180 degrees. And just to, well, to test this in the 
in this example, we could actually find out the measures of these angles because, uh, well, the program measures the angles for us. So here we go. I'm gonna uh, measure. Oops. selected. Okay, so measure angle ECF, measure angle. So here it is, measure of angle ECF. And now we will measure the angle EAF, measure. So again, I have something else selected, EAF, measure. EAF, and now we can um, actually add measure calculate. We could calculate. We can say a measure of this angle plus a measure of the other angle, and here we go. We have that the measure of the two opposite angles is 180 degrees, and even if we change the measures. So you see, angle Y and angle X are changing, but the sum stays 180 degrees all the time. And same, the same applies by the exact same argument for the other two angles. Angles F and E also always add up to 180 degrees. And uh, that's it. Thank you for watching.